morning winterizer fertilizers what is the myth that's been thrown out there for years that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about winterizer fertilizers why you don't need to use them more than likely and what you should be putting down on your lawn now and as we start to get colder and colder and colder i'll talk about that so hold on hey guys oh man it's actually a little bit chilly out here today <laughs> It's actually in the 50s for the first time. You come out here and it's like, woo, the pond has actually got uh, has actually got a fog over it. But I want to talk about real directly, real quickly, winterizer fertilizers. And there's two categories here. There's warm season grass and cool season grass. They both need to be treated differently. Now, don't forget, we cover a lot of this in the lawn guides. The lawn guides are up. They're free. Go get them. I'll put a link to the products I'm talking about and the lawn guides in the description below. Uh, and right away, yes, my new real mower, the 2024 model that no one has seen yet, did arrive yesterday. I'll do be doing some videos on that. So uh, anyways, let's get going. The first thing I want to do is let's talk about cool season grasses. Well, actually, I, let's change that. Warm season. Let's start with warm season because warm season is easy. As our Bermuda and Zoysia lawns start to actually tail down, there's really nothing we need to do to our lawns. We just let them go to sleep. When your temperatures start to consistently be in the low 80s and 70s or high 70s in there, in other words, your growth rate is slowing down, you can put down um, a light coat of a bag rate of PGF Balance. Now, PGF Balance is an all fast release, 10, 10, 10. If you haven't had a soil test, then you can put that down. Just put it down. You're putting a little bit of nutrients in the soil. It's all fast release. And whatever your lawn needs, it'll take up. If it doesn't need it, it won't use it. Got it? So that's kind of the mindset we're having here. So the myth that's sort of been pushed for quite a while about winterizer fertilizers is that you need to bump up potassium and phosphorus. Let me go directly to some quotes, and there's plenty. If you Google, go to Google and type in winterizer fertilizer myths. You can read the same information from the universities and extension offices. I'm just going to read this real quick. Uh, those who advocate, this is from Colorado State Agricultural uh, Turf section. Those who advocate using fertilizers with a winterizer fertilizer say that the need is based on research, but the research has been done with warm season grasses, such as Bermuda grass and zoysia grass, neither of which is well adapted to cold season climates. No evidence is available to suggest that extra phosphorus and potassium in fall benefit cool season grasses. Got it? So bluegrass, fescues, and ryegrass. There's no research that shows it's a benefit. Purdue University, their turf science extension. Though potassium is important in your turf, it is unnecessary to apply on lawns unless a soil test reveals that you need potassium. Thus, widespread potassium application when not needed is bad. Most winterizer fertilizers suggest application between blah, 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 blah. That's not it. Anyways, the last application of the year near the final mowing should consist of a quick release nitrogen source. Got it? Interesting, huh? So a lot of people are out there thinking that they need to put a winterizer down, that high potassium, bumping up the potassium or bumping up the phosphorus beyond normal levels is somehow going to help, and it's just not true. We've always said you don't put fertilizers down to feed your plant. You put fertilizers down to feed the soil, and then the plant will take up what it needs. So what does that mean? That means that if you do a soil test, which you should do, right now is a great time to do it. That's what I'm doing today. If you do a soil test, if you see a deficiency, then target that one sort of uh, nutrient and put down that nutrient or a fertilizer that has a little bit higher of that. So if you're low on potassium, put a one that has a little bit higher. If you're low on phosphorus, bump up your phosphorus application. But in general, for cool season lawns, you want, a, as you go into your last cutting section, right before winter time, the one thing you want to do actually, is you actually want a fast release nitrogen. Well, what do we have in our product lineup that's an all fast release nitrogen, high in nitrogen? Believe it or not, Green Shocker. Green Shocker is a great last season or late season fertilizer for cool season grasses. Green Shocker is the size of salt. It's a DG particle. You put it down, you put it on your lawn, you run your irrigation, it turns into a liquid form, it goes right into your soil. It's an all fast delivery. That's probably one of the best things you can do very, very last. Now, right now while you're growing and you're in your growing season, 
you're going to actually use PGF Complete, which is a 1648. Now, unless you have a soil test and your soil says, I need something a little bit more to balance out. Got it? Warm season. Warm season, we're at the point where we're shutting off our standard fertilizer. So I'm really not putting out any more PGF Complete. The only thing I'll probably do on my, on my front and maybe here, depending on my soil test, is put down a little bit of PGF Balance, which is again, PGF Balance, all fast release, 10, 10, 10. But I'm gonna wait for my soil test, which should be back in maybe about a 10 days or so. I'm getting ready to send them off. What are you doing now, Doc? We're gonna talk about soil testing. And I'm gonna give you a perfect example of why you don't wanna use a, a winterizer or go really extreme on nutrients. Okay, so the house is down there. Our vegetable garden is here. This is the buck field. I don't remember the last time that I tested the buck field. So I'm taking a soil sample from the buck field just to make sure that it sort of correlates to this field, which it may not. This one may be different. This one has been growing fairly well. This is the field we call the high, the high potassium field. I thought we couldn't get anything to grow in here. We'd put down seed and it would come up white and purple. And I thought that it was a residual from a weed killer. We, had, we have Carolina horse nettle here, which is, which is this, which is the world's most obnoxious weed. Look at those spikes. The spikes are all the way down that plant. And it's actually toxic to some animals. So I had to come out here and do a killing of that Carolina horse nettle. But I thought it was a residual of the, uh, of the herbicide we put down, but it was like months and months and months. We'd put down seed and that seed would turn purple and white. <laughs> So I said, let me do a soil test. We did a soil test here and the, the potassium was through the roof. I mean, it was super, super high. Why is that? This area tears down and there used to be an ancient river that used to th flow through here. And so all the sedimentary rock that's here would just degrade and degrade and release potassium into the soil. And so it's just from naturally from this rock that's here, it's high in potassium. The other problem is it's low on phosphorus. <laughs> so how do you get a, how do I make that adjustment? Believe it or not, I'm actually, I ordered, uh, Home Depot is gonna deliver uh, a product I normally don't recommend, which is malorganite. I've got, um, I need some nitrogen. I've got some, I've got some broadleaf turnips and things that I'll be planting in here, but malorganite is a 640. That's the weirdest thing no fertilizer numbers and i don't recommend it because normally people put it down on their lawn and their phosphorus level gets real high and you have a hard time getting rid of phosphorus but in this case i'm actually going to use it it's cheap if i try and buy a granular phosphorus fertilizer i'm gonna i'm gonna have to get it shipped in it's gonna be probably like 25 dollars a bag 30 dollars a bag then i'm gonna have to pay 25 dollars shipping i'm gonna end up paying 50 dollars a bag for that stuff so i said to myself self why don't i just get some malorganite and i'll put malorganite down i'll get a little bit of nitrogen but i'll get a lot of phosphorus in here so i'm actually going to put malorganite on my field uh, just because it has that high phosphorus level in it which i normally don't recommend but this is a great example of of not understanding what your soil is and what your soil needs. Forget about your plants. What is that soil makeup? When we had uh, the other house, the Bermuda lawn, before we sold it, it was low on phosphorus. So I would hit it with PGF balance a few times a year, bump up that. It was okay on potassium, a little bit low on potassium, but it really needed phosphorus. So I put down PGF balance and man, my lawn just bounced back up. It, it, it's a huge difference when you understand your numbers on your lawn. I don't worry about micronutrients so much. You know, I'm low on copper or I'm really high on copper. That's really not, it's the three main. It's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are the main numbers you wanna look at. I basically ignore everything else on a soil test except for the pH. pH is the other number that you really wanna look at. Why is pH so important to me? Because pH, I did a video on it, pH will determine how your plant can uptake certain nutrients. In other words, if you have a, let's say if you have a really low pH, 
you may not, your plants may not be able to take up the iron it needs. It, there's a chart that I put up on that other video. So pH is really important to look at too. My pH here is okay. My pH is like a, is about a six on these fields and I'm okay with that. But again, that high potassium, people put down high, high, high potassium for winterizers when their soil doesn't need it and it actually can cause problems. So be real careful. Again, if you're a cool season lawn, you, the last thing, one of the last fertilizers you're gonna put down is a fast release nitrogen when the, when the temperature really starts to get cold, boom. During the growing season, PGF complete, which is balanced, which is a 1648. If you have a soil test, you need another number, then use another number. It's pretty simple. Doc, how do you do your soil testing? There's two ways you can do it. There's the new high-tech online kits. In the description below, I'll link to that. Um, I did a review on it last year. It's a soil test kit. They'll send you a kit. You put a little bit of dirt in it, general sample, send it off. You get your results back in like five to seven days. That's perfect for a lawn. For me, in this agricultural situation, I'm going to be sending off at least four or five samples and larger samples from these fields. So I'm going to take that and I'm actually sending it to Clemson University. And I like Clemson University because they use one sheet. I'll link to the sheet if you want to see it in the, on that page. But I can list all my samples on that one sheet. It's $6 a sample and I put it in the, I dropped it off at the post office this morning and sent it off and they'll test for everything, including CECs. That's one thing I do like about it. One thing I do use is I was out here the other day. I think I shot a little video of it, but I use a soil probe. This is my soil probe. It looks like that. And these things are not cheap, I'll tell you right now, but I've had this thing for years. Matter of fact, look at the handle. I actually use a five pound mallet to drive that through hard soil to insert um, poles in the garden. Uh, that's my stainless steel soil probe and then my bags if you're gonna send it off to something like Clemson you're gonna need a soil bag and I'll link to these I order these like 50 at a time you get these on Amazon and they have a plastic coating on the inside so what I do is I take about I take about half to three quarters of a cup of soil and I put it on a paper plate now I label my bag so on this field right here, I labeled it buck. Near the pond, I labeled it pond. That's all you gotta do, it's for your own use. Then I take the paper plate and I write buck or pond on the paper plate and I let it dry out. And then I have a little wire screen that I use just to sort of take out any big clumpy stuff and rocks and everything else. I put it after it dries for 24 hours, I put it in the bags and I send it off and get it back usually in about a week or two. So it'll be interesting to see how these different areas test kind of a peaceful view isn't it so it'll be interesting to see what these soil tests the results bring back um, I know for the fact on that high potassium field I do not want to put down any potassium up there period zero potassium <laughs> and it's so hard to find specialized fertilizers sometime so that's why I'm throwing down some malorganite because I need some nitrogen because I've got some real leafy stuff that I'm planting up there plus I've got to get some more phosphorus up there without adding potassium so it gets a little bit confusing sometimes anyways guys uh i got several more videos coming out uh wednesday Whew, a little bit windy wednesday two days from now anna and the good witch are going to be here they're going to be up in the garden and we're going to be cutting some grass i got that new real mower i got to do a video on that i got a bunch of other videos we got going on so uh hit subscribe and i'll talk to you later Doc.